we are directly talking about undermining God's plan as he has revealed it to us. We're replacing his authority with our own. If marriage is no longer between one man and one woman, are we open to the idea of polygamy? We disregard the heterosexual aspect, so why not the monogamous aspect too? If love is love, as we keep hearing, who's to say that three men loving each other is not more love than two men loving each other? And I'm sure someone in this chamber has echoed the words love is love tonight, and this is not about love being love, this is about marriage, the sacrament of holy matrimony. It is directly connected to love, but it's not the definition of love. Too many people utter those words and confuse the meaning of love. Agape, the biblical context of love, is a divine love, it's a sacrificial love. It's not lustful. People often conflate sex with love. It's very disingenuous, we've heard quite a bit of that. But then of course, atheists often pirate the words, God is love, and we've heard that one tonight too. Again, without any understanding. Yes, God is love, but he sets the terms, not us. Another one we've heard plenty of is inclusivity. Should the church be more inclusive? Again, it's a play of words. It's, it's virtue signaling. It's to appear good rather than to be good. The church should absolutely be inclusive. Christ spent time with tax collectors and prostitutes, but it is they who went away changed, not Christ. We are fallen, therefore we are all sinners. The church is open to sinners, of course it is, that's the purpose of the church. But it should not be to encourage people to continue to sin. Our duty as clerics is to help lead people to Christ, to lead them away from sin, not to embrace it, not to affirm it. I know many LGBT people who live lives in Christ. They abstain from sexual gratification to be closer to God, and it's not easy, it really isn't. It's perhaps not fair, but it is right and it is good. And these people are being let down. I've had people crying, saying, I could have got married, but I did what the church taught me was right, and now the church is saying they were wrong all along. I've wasted my life. As Christians, we're called to be in the world, but not of the world. In the secular world, we already have equality in law. People can enter civil partnerships or even gay marriage outside of the church, and that's their prerogative. However, the faith is inherently discriminatory. God is discriminatory. He sets conditions on us entering his heavenly kingdom. It is not a free-for-all. We must turn away from sin, repent, and follow Christ. And I want to specify, it is the sin that is the problem, not the sinner. Every single person is loved by God, and God forgives all of us of our depravity but we have to turn away from our sins and turn toward him. And it seems the panel opposite me has forgotten to separate the sin from the sinner. One can denounce sin while still welcoming the sinner. So as I wrap up, my message to the proposing side is do not lead us astray. Do not lead people astray. Do not be the wolves in sheep's clothing. Do not be the false teachers that the Bible warns us about. Remember your obligation to defend the faith. Stop teaching about diversity, inclusion, and equality and get back to teaching about redemption and salvation. This is spiritual neglect. Help people by telling them the truth. Be kind to people by supporting them through those struggles and reminding them that Christ suffers with them. And be compassionate by leading them to Christ when the world tries to lead them away from him. The church is imploding and the faithful masses have stopped turning up on Sundays and we are seeing the most rapid decline of Christianity in this country that we may have ever seen. Do not accelerate it with heresy. You do not have the authority to bless sin. When I hear the Bishop of London on record saying these new prayers will mean priests can bless same-sex relationships, some of which may be sexual in nature, I hear the devil at work. Bishops are promoting the idea of sacramental sodomy. Let them be anathema, repent. And to the rest of you, I have no doubt that some of you will consider me a bigot or a transphobe or a homophobe, but I am neither of those things, none of those things. I'm simply a follower of Christ, a Christian. And we are naturally countercultural. And if so-called liberals were truly diverse and tolerant, they would embrace us just as they embrace everyone else. And the point has been made, but the growing Christophobic attitude around this public debate and the ugly level of, of hypocrisy is that we really see people hold Muslims and people of other faiths to the same expectations that they hold Christians to. Who is calling for the Quran to be updated to modern societal norms? The same patronizing attitude of people of other, that treat other faiths, patronize other faiths while being intolerant towards Christians at the same time. It's a shame, but in the words of St. Athanasius of Alexandria, if the world is against the truth, then I am against the world.